Okay, in this how to, we are going to learn how to avoid using ASP hyperlink completely on my page without compromising the flexibility of controlling the redirect. So there, there might be many ways to do that, but here I have uh, shown one very simple ways. So again, I'm copying pasting this code uh, to my ASP space to save some time. So here is the code of the ASP space and then I shall also explain this code once I am done with the copy pasting and this is the code behind now here <coughs> what we have done is that we have placed one anchor tag HTML anchor tag on the ASPX page where href is the code behind variable string type variable and then rest of the codes of the anchor tag is simple title equal to whatever we want and then text itfunda.com and in the code behind what we have done is that we have declared a protected variable that is uh, of a scope of the page label is page label and then that variable has been specified with the value http www.itfunda.com it means that when this page will render on the page this particular underscore redirect URL variable will be written in place of this code and ultimately when it will render it will have a href equal to http www.itfunda.com so when we will click this itfunda.com link it will basically go to the itfunda.com website first let's see this uh, with uh, in the demo so here is my uh, page now this is the link now let's go ahead and see the view source in the view source you can see that in place of this underscore redirect URL itfunda.com is coming that's why we had written in, in the code behind so when we'll click this itfunda.com link it will go to itfunda.com website you can see that it is going to the itfunda.com website it is opening this website okay the next how to is how to open a page in a new browser window or tab when clicking on the link okay in order to open a page in a new browser window or the tab we need to specify target and the value should be underscore blank let's just see this I'm removing all these codes and here is my hyperlink now in this hyperlink notice that I have written target is equal to underscore blank now what it will do is that when we will click on this link it will open itfunda.com in the another window let us see this you can see that the itfunda.com website is opening into the new tab window now the next is how to apply CSS from the server side to the link it, it is almost similar as uh, specifying the CSS style from the code behind in the button or any other control so let me show you this with example so suppose that here is the hyperlink control and we want to access uh, we want to apply CSS style into it then we can access it using its ID now here what we need to do is that we need to, uh, to write the page load event object sender event ERGS and then we can access the code the ID of the hyperlink control and you can access the its CSS related uh, properties for example border width sorry border style equal to dotted and hyper window dot border width is equal to unit dot pixel and maybe 15 pixel now what will happen is that as soon as we will run this particular page this hyperlink control will have the border you can see that border is there and border style is dotted and the border width is 15 pixel now when we click it will again go to the same itfunda.com website now the next thing that we are going to learn is drop down list and list box control 
Before we proceed with the how to of this drop down list and list box control, let us see what is drop down list and list box. Drop down list uh, is basically uh, helps us to display HTML select box on the web page. And it is useful to display multiple items in the drop down list where a user would be able to select only one item. Okay, and it is useful to display medium or large size items. For a small list of items, we can opt for the radio button list. Uh, we will talk about radio button list later on. Now let us see what is list box. List box is also similar to the drop down, except that it displays multiple items to the user, and it can allow multiple selections as well. We'll see all of them one by one. So first, uh, let us see how to of the drop down. How to render drop down list or list box through ASP.NET and add item. In order to render drop down list in ASP.NET, we need to use uh, ASP hyperlink control and add the items. Let us see this. Now, in order to add the item, what we can do is that we can write ASP list item and then we can specify text and its value. When we specify text and its value, what will happen is that when uh, it will appear as a item for the drop down. You can see here item 1, item 2, item, two, item 3 and item 4 is coming. Now here the limitation is that user would be able to select only one item uh, from this particular list. okay? And it will also display only one item. Now let's talk ab uh, about uh, list box. In the in case of list box, what happens is that you have flexibility to show more than one item to the user. Now here you can see that I ha I'm displaying again four items using ASP list item tag, and now when we'll in uh, refresh this page you will notice that this item this uh, list box has four item and we are able to show more than one item to the user okay now user will also be able to select more than one item from here we will see that later on so this is the basically difference between the drop down list and the list item drop down list allows us to add multiple items but you, but to display only one item from that so that user will be able to select only one item but list box allows us to display multiple items and user may be able to select either one item or multiple item based on the configuration we will set now the next how to is how to populate drop down list or list box from the data source okay let us see this now let me copy paste this aspx code paste it into my uh, aspx page so here is my drop down list as well as I'm sorry drop down list as well as the list box control and now let me copy paste the code behind so in the code behind what we'll do is that we'll go to the under page load event and we will copy paste our code into the page load event And in order to do, to do that, what we need to do is that we will have to use system dot data. Okay, that's a namespace that we will have to use because here we are going to use the data set object. So in, in order to use data set, we need to use system dot data namespace. That's what we have used here. And now here, what I'm doing is that I am first reading an XML file into the data set, and that data set is being set as the data source of the drop down so here is my drop down now you can see that in this drop down we have a specified data text field and data value field and this data text field and data value field is basically related with the xml data that we are going to read into this so here is my xml data in this xml data we have a departments as a parent node and we have uh, dep uh, under that we have many departments with name and ID and the same name and ID we are specifying as a data text field and data value field the data text field basically appears as an item to the user uh, 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 of, of the drop down and data value field is used uh, for, for the code so when uh, you will select for example when we will select here uh, 
soft engineering then the value will be 3 exist into the code behind as a drop down value now uh, similarly what we have done is that we have specified a list box data source also to the data set now once we have specified the data source then we will have to bind that we will have to call a dot data bind method so that all the items of this particular uh, xml file will get bounded to this drop down list and the list box control now let us run this page and see how it's working now you can see that uh, my all the data of this xml file is been bounded to the drop down list and as well as into the list box control now let us go ahead and see the source of this particular page and you will notice that whatever data was written into this xml file it has been bounded as an item to this drop down as well as the list box control